So, I have a new book, Living with Complexity, because many people complain that our technologies are too complex. You cannot understand them. I argue the opposite. Technology is complex because life is complex. We all live very complex lives, and the tools that we must have must match that complexity. So, complexity is good. What is bad is confusion. So, being complicated is bad. You change from complicated to understandable if you divide into small pieces and understand each. So, the trick is to understand. And I want to illustrate that with a problem that many of you face, which is this new media. What does it mean if you run a company? How do you interact with your customers? What does it mean that there is now a new way? Well, <clears throat> the new way is the old way. The old way was people talked to each other. We sometimes called it gossip. Then, in between, in the 19th and 20th centuries, in the 1900s, we changed the way we talked to people. We started talking by a superior person talked to inferior like I am doing now. I am talking to you, and you are listening. You cannot talk back. Newspapers go one way, from the newspaper to the person. Books go one way, from the book to the reader. Radio goes one way, from the station to the listener. Television goes one way, and so we are used to broadcast. We are used to advertising, where we try to advertise from one person to everybody. And so the advertisement is meaningless, because this one advertisement must match everybody. And there are many, many advertisements, so how can you get attention? In the last decade, we have had the internet, and we have had web pages, and every company has a web page and a website. But this is still the old model. It is still one website for everybody. And the problem is, how does anybody ever discover the website? There are many, many techniques you might use, but it is still one website for everybody. So now let us look at the real new media. When I walk around, I see many smartphones, many iPhones, uh, many personal computers, many iPads. So, <clears throat> many of you are using text messages, SMS, Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare. What are these? These are individual people talking to other individual people. Just look at Facebook or Twitter. It is sending a message from you to other people. It is for the first time that the voice of you can be heard. Your customers can talk to each other. Your customers can complain about your service to your other customers. Your customers can praise your service to your other customers. We have brought back gossip. The new technologies are the technologies of gossip. And so, Instead of being afraid of it, 
saying, I don't understand what is happening with all of these new things. You can, re you can understand it by thinking back to what it really is, which is people talking to people. Now, there are many good things about people talking to people. You, for example, can tell how well your service is working because you can look to see what people say about you. People may not complain to you directly, but they will complain on the web, on these services. So this allows you to correct things. It also allows you to find out what is good. But there are bad parts to this new as well. Gossip is a word that is usually not considered good because we have people who are intelligent and informed sending messages and we have people who are ignorant and stupid sending messages and we have people who do not know what they are talking about sending messages and your problem is they are sending messages about your business so how do you control this? The answer is you cannot control it. But you can try to help it. And the best way is you must be part of this. You must be part of the discussion about your company. So, the only way to take advantage of these new media is you must be a part of it. You must have a Twitter feed. You must have a Facebook page. You must have check-in at Foursquare. Uh, you must be part of whatever the services are here so that you know what is happening and you can give your answers back. One thing we have discovered in marketing is that when there is a problem with your service, and people complain, you can turn this into an advantage. In fact, sometimes I think it is an advantage to have people complain. Because if you then respond and say, oh, that is, I am very sorry, and here is what I am doing to correct it, people think more highly of you. It is interesting. If you do perfect service, people do not say anything. If you do one bad service, and then you say, oh, I am so sorry, I will change and correct it, then people talk about it. And so you are better to have a few complaints that you take care of than to have no complaints very peculiar business. But it is the new media that makes this possible. It is a new media that allows you to hear the complaints and hear the praise and respond. But it is very important that you are always responding because it is very important that you always are listening and that your customers know that you are always paying attention to them and listening. This will take time, but it is interesting time because it keeps you in touch with what your customers are thinking. And maybe you should hire a student who can do this for you. Students like to do this. Um, they are not so expensive but they can keep you informed about what is happening. They will be watching and listening all of the time, and they can tell you the important comments. So, there is a new change that is happening. To summarize, in the past, it was broadcast. It was one person to many. And then the difficulty was being heard in the crowd. How could your advertisement be seen? On web pages, this is a major problem. In order for people to find your web page, 
they have to go to Google or Yahoo or Microsoft or something. And there, though, there are a billion web pages. So the only way your web page is found is if other people point to your web page. And other people point to your web page only if there is a reason to do so. And so it is very difficult to optimize your website. In the new media, it is different. It is people talking to people, and you can harness this. The easiest new customer is an old customer. You can spend a lot of money to bring in someone completely new. It takes much less money and much less effort to bring back an old customer. Repeat customers are easier, cheaper, but only if you pay attention to them, only if they feel that you are committed to them, if there is a reason to come back. There are other things that are happening also. Look at the Encyclopedia Botanica, which in the English language is the most authoritative source of news, written by authorities. And look at Wikipedia. Does that come across, Wikipedia? Which is written by everyday people. And today, which is more popular? It is the one written by people. So it used to be we had the boss, we had the politician, we had the academic, we had the authority who sent information down. Just like companies and television <coughs> and radio would broadcast down. And nothing ever came up again. People were expected to read and listen and obey. Today it is very different. Today the information comes from the people and goes to the people. Wikipedia is written by the people. Foursquare is written by the people. Twitter is written by the people. Blogs are written by the people. We have, in the United States, we have ratings of restaurants and stores. There is a service called Yelp. Yelp. Where people write comments about places they have visited. And this is how people discover what is useful. In addition, we know where people are. And we know who's, who your friends are. So you can take advantage of this. Instead of advertising to everybody in Italy, you can advertise to people who are close to your store, who might be able to come and buy something or have a meal or take your services. Because we know where people are located and we can target people nearby. We also know what people have done in the past, just like when you buy a book from Amazon, Amazon can say, oh, I see you are looking at this book. Well, other people who have looked at this book have also liked these other books. Or we can say, people who have, people who have done things similar to you have also done these other things that you might like. So we can make suggestions based on the individual. Google just announced a new social network. When you search for something on Google, now not only does it look for the words you wrote, it then tries to find out which are the most important websites relevant to the words you wrote. But it then says, who are your friends? And it looks to see what your friends have recommended for those words. And even it looks to see what your friends, what the friends of your friends have recommended. And so Google and other services are now trying to join this by saying, everyday people are saying what they like. 
And so we can give better responses if we say, when you ask for something, we can say, okay, who are you? Who are your friends? What do your friends like? Maybe you would like the same thing. I think all of this that I just described is simply the modern form of gossip. So if you listen to gossip, and if you respond, and if you take part, and you show that you listen and that you care, you can exploit the modern social networks to help you, to help your business. Make more people come to you, make you more responsive to what people want, and improve everything. So that is making maybe what should become what is complex into something that I think is simple. But it requires work on your part. And everything that is simple on the outside is actually complex behind the scenes. Uh, look at this talk. I am simply standing here and talking, but I have a wireless microphone, and we have people in back and people in back there making sure it all works. There are a lot of people running around that you cannot see that are making it so it is simple for you. Well, that is how you must run your business. You must have some people behind the scenes to make it easy for the customer and to make your customers say, oh, they are listening to me, they are paying attention, they treat me as a person. That is the power of the new media. I think at this point, I'm happy to take questions. Bene, a questo punto, considerando che abbiamo, abbiamo ancora un po' di tempo, se c'è qualcuno che ha una domanda, credo sia un'occasione più unica che rara. Chi rompe il ghiaccio? Abbiamo tempo per un paio di domande. Corto io, corto io. Prego. Sì, ecco, buongiorno a tutti, sono un operatore turistico qui di Massa Marittima, eh, desideravo chiedere al professore, ha detto all'inizio del suo eh, speech, che eh, il, l il new way sarebbe l'old way, quindi eh, alla stessa maniera io mi domandavo, siccome siamo qui riuniti anche per parlare dello sviluppo, anche, anche diciamo del, per fare eh, dei turisti, dell'incoming eccetera, mi domando se questo nuovo sistema diciamo, non va talvolta un pochino oltre, quindi le persone se scoprono diciamo, il mondo troppo dalle scrivanie e dalle poltrone forse li togliamo anche un po' di desiderio di andare a scoprirlo da sé, va bene un po' di invito, di incuriosire, ma se diciamo li, li facciamo vedere tutto, se addirittura in un modo virtuale c'è il pedone che può camminare e vedere tutto, mi domando se al limite questo, questa nuova visione non sia un pochino anche penalizzante per noi. Vi ringrazio. What did she say? <laughs> Street view makes possible to view everything of a city that you want to discover, uh, like uh, Florence, for example. So it's too much sometimes, but you know before you travel. So I am in the United States. <laughs> I want to visit Florence. I want to know what hotel to stay at. Or maybe is there a tourist service that would be useful. The old way is I subscribe to a magazine and I look for advertisements. Or maybe I go to the internet and I hope I find a website. The new way is I ask my friends, who has been to Florence recently? What was your experience? Um, there are websites that help, a trip advisor. I go to TripAdvisor and say, what are the good hotels? What are the good, recommend, good restaurants? And then I 
but I form a little group, a social group of people who discuss it. And this is happening every day. You can see it on the internet. Now, if you are, if you own a hotel or a restaurant, that's very good if you can have positive things said about you. Remember, though, that there are different kinds of restaurants and hotels, so you have to find the right group. That some are very expensive, luxury ones, some are inexpensive. Maybe there is a service that could help, a tourist service. Now, here is where the challenge is. How do you get recognized? Because you want to say, come to me and I will talk with you and I know your needs and I will find the best hotel and the best restaurant and the best places to visit. But I think it is the same thing. You have to get people talking about you. You have to get people who have used your services to write about it, to say, oh, this has been a very excellent trip. And I even had a problem, but they took care of it right away. So how do you get people to write about you? Lasciamo spazio a, a qualche altro intervento. No, certamente, no, of course for booking it was uh, in, uh, indispensabile, but for telling story I think it, it was necessary some, some time to stop a, a little big moment before. Okay. I, but I think that the new method is telling stories. And the new method is, is not you telling stories. The new method is encouraging your customers to tell stories, which is how you get the new customers, when the old customers tell good stories. So that is the new method, storytelling. Abbiamo tempo per un'altra domanda? Uh, C'era... Sì, 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 ok. Riflettendo sul tema della giornata, quindi sviluppo solidale, etico e sostenibile, ehm, Nicolas Negroponte nel, sta lavorando a One Laptop per Child, che è un'iniziativa un che guarda verso lo sviluppo solidale. In che modo i network sociali possono eh, favorire un riequilibrio nelle disparità tra il sud e il nord del mondo, se hanno questo tipo di potenzialità, oltre a essere appunto un, un avere la possibilità di dare democrazia nel dialogo tra le persone. Grazie. Well, I said the new technology is gossip, telling stories. So um, that is not the way to solve the difficulties you have between the north and the south and maybe the center. The north, the south, and the center is um, a social and political problem. Now, how do you encounter, how do you solve that one? Well, there is a problem with gossip, namely, Many people who are leading the gossip are, have very strong opinions and many people are not necessarily informed. And if you are not careful, the new technologies can make the gap worse, not better. The only way to fight this is, with, is by you, by other people joining the conversation. So the one advantage here is that anybody can join the conversation. So it is very important if you hear a conversation you do not like, or you hear people saying things you think are false, that you join in and, and try to make corrections. But technologies cannot solve all of the social problems of the world. That is up to people. The main thing that is happening is that for the first time we can have people talking directly to people. Because up to now, the newspapers talk to the people. 
and the television set com uh, companies talk to the people, but the people cannot talk to other people. So the new technologies make that possible. Will that solve your problems? Nobody knows. Tempo per l'ultima breve domanda. Eh, potete amplificare questo microfono? Eh, torno sul tema del turismo. Come possiamo fare per cercare di attrarre tutte quelle persone che sono impaurite da, dalla tecnologia e quindi dall'eventuale del successivo utilizzo dei social network? Come li possiamo attrarre per cercare di far capire loro che questo è il nuovo e forse l'unico mezzo per cercare di fare promozione all'avanguardia? The, the new social media is, it is true, is mostly for the younger people, people like me. <laughs> it is not for everybody. So you will reach only the people who are part. But this is the future. And so if you start today, you are attracting the people of the future. It will probably take 10 years before that is almost everybody. But you have to start today so you are going to be a leader in 10 years. So meanwhile today you must, I think you must embrace this new network because even people who do not use the social media will talk to people who do. And so they will learn about what you are doing from the other people. And remember, one of the power here is that you can hear the problems of your customers and take care of them. And that word spreads. And that word will spread through normal means, through people on the telephone or people talking to their friends. For people who do not use any of the new media, well, yes, you, you cannot stop advertising in the newspaper or you cannot stop your websites. Those are very important. But we are in a transition. And any time you are in a transition, you must do two things. One is you must keep with the normal methods, but you must take the new methods as a great opportunity to become one of the new leaders. So you must do both. Very last question. Salve, cosa pensa eh, del bilancio? Uh, what do you think about the balance uh, between the fact that uh, we can have a lot of information from social media and the owners of uh, social media knows uh, everything about our life? The, there is a major problem that we do not yet understand well. As I said, Google is, when you now search on Google, they look to see what your friends say and what the friends of your friends say. And pretty soon everybody knows everything you are doing. It is impossible to do anything in secret or it is impossible to do things you might not want people to know. And actually, secrets are good. For example, suppose I want to surprise my wife and secretly buy a present for her. Maybe I cannot do that anymore because she's on the internet and she sees where I was and how I spend my money or spend her money. <laughs> um, voting. It has, in all democracies, it is very important that a vote be secret so that nobody can persuade you to vote in a way you do not want to vote. 
So it is very important that we maintain some parts of privacy. And this is being a very difficult issue today. The question is how. Google has a movie about its new social network and social search. And it is interesting in this movie uh, because it is on YouTube. Um, they don't tell you much about how the search works. What they, try to tell, what they try to do is reassure you that they will never use your information without your permission. And so in this movie, they tried to say over and over again, we will not use your information unless you say that we are allowed to. We will not look at your friends unless we say, you say that you are allowed to. Now, it's interesting. You have to say, you may look at my friends, but your friends do not have a choice, I don't think. So, this is, this is complex. And every new technology brings this type of problem to us. Now, privacy is a very interesting issue. 100 or 200 years ago, most people lived in smaller cities and everybody knew what everybody was doing. There was less privacy then. When we started moving to larger cities and traveling more, we started developing more privacy. And the modern notion of privacy is fairly new. And I think that now we are starting to develop a different notion of privacy. And I don't know how it's going to develop. But I can tell you this is a major problem in every country of the world that I have visited, in, in the United States, in Korea, in Japan, in China, and all across Europe. Probably the leader in privacy rights is the EU here in Europe. But what I was talking about, this new media of interacting directly with your customers and getting your voice out, that does not raise privacy issues. Because these are people themselves volunteering their opinions to others. And this is you listening to their words and responding. So I don't think this raises any privacy issues. This shows that you are interested and concerned. And that can be a good thing. Bene. Grazie Donald Norman, vi ricordo il suo libro Vivere con la complessità. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Facciamo salire intanto chiamerei i green drops vieni vieni 